our God, Yahweh. Psalm 145, verse 1 to number 21. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day we are blessed thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare the mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of the majesty, and of the wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of the terrible acts, and I will declare the greatness. They shall abundantly alter the memory of the great goodness, and shall sing of the righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies are over all his works. All the works shall praise thee, O Lord, and the saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of the kingdom and talk of the power to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. That kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and that dominion endureth through all, all generations. The law uphold all that fall and raise up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee. And thou givest them that meet in this season. I receive it. Thou openest thy hand and certify the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is now unto all them that call upon him. So all that call upon him in truth, he will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and he will save them. The Lord preserve all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh upon this mountain and wherever he are. Bless his holy name forever and ever with the joy of the Lord in our heart. Let's please rise up on our feet, lift our voice as we return the glory unto our God, Yahweh. Lord, we are grateful tonight. We say thank you for your greatness. Thank you for what you have done for us. Lord, from this service, for what we said to experience upon this mountain tonight. Father, we say thank you for your greatness we said to experience upon this mountain tonight. We say thank you for what you said to do, for the healing, for the impartation, for the healing, for the impartation. We said to have uh, upon this mountain, Lord, we say thank you. We gave you the praise. Uh, we thank you, Lord, for your presence here. We thank you tonight. We gave you adoration. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be praised. Uh, let your name be exalted. Let your name be adored. Thank you, Yahweh. We honor your name. Let your name be praised. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying unto our God, Yahweh. Let us please remain standing, put our hands together for Jesus as we welcome forth the praise team. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and lift your voice. Hallelujah. Lift your hand in his presence. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Let God hear your voice of thanksgiving. He's worthy. We bless your name. You are not a man to lie. We worship you. We adore you. We honor you. We magnify you. We exalt you, Jesus. We bless your name. You never lie to me. You never lie to me. Oh, the lion of Judah. You never lie oh, to me. Say you never lie. Lift your hands and say, you are 
of your voice and I appreciate the Almighty God. Let return his glory, lift up your voice as we appreciate the Almighty God. We return his glory, we celebrate him, we give him his praise. Father, we give you the praise, we say thank you, we appreciate you. Father, you are a big God, we glorify your holy name, we say thank you and thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praised and worship the almighty God, Yahweh. With joy in our hearts, Lord, please put our hands together for Jesus to wait bigger and bigger and can I have your seats. Shut the worship on our feet as we take on our perfected prayer of thanksgiving. Please open your Bible to our covenant schedule of thanksgiving this hour to the book of Isaiah as we read chapter 41 verse 20. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 20, it reads, That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord had done this and the Holy One of Israel, the Holy One of the Remedy family had created it. Therefore, we shall be praying this order. Our God, Yahweh, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the Remedy family, Holy Spirit, the greater one that lives in us. The Remedy family say thank you for your divine backing, your divine presence, your good hands, your marvelous help, your faithfulness, your mercy, your power, your glory, your grace, your wisdom. And the supernatural that cannot be denied with the remedy family and upon all her stewards and members within and abroad. With the attitude of thanksgiving, I'd like you to jump to your feet this hour as we give thanks to the Almighty God, our God Yahweh, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the remedy family, Holy Spirit, the greater one that lives in us. The remedy family say thank you for your divine backing. Your divine presence, your good hands, your marvelous help, your faithfulness, your mercy, your power, your glory, your grace. Father, we say thank you for your mercy, your power, your glory, your grace, and the supernatural that cannot be denied with the remedy movement and upon all her sewers and members within and abroad. Father, we give you the praise. Our God, Yahweh, we celebrate you. Our God, Yahweh, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the Remedy family, Holy Spirit, the greater one that lives in us. The Remedy family say thank you. Father, we give you the glory. We are grateful. We say thank you. We magnify your name. We say thank you for your divine backing. We say thank you. We celebrate you for your divine presence. We appreciate you for your good hands, your marvelous help, your faithfulness, your mercy. Father, we say thank you for your glory, your power. Father, we say thank you, Father, for your wisdom and the supernatural that cannot be denied with the remedy movement and upon all our stewards and members. You alone deserve the glory. You alone deserve the praise. Father, we magnify your name. We return your honor. Take all your glory. Yahweh, take your praise. We magnify your holy name. Father, we give you the praise. We say thank you for your divine backing. We say thank you for your divine presence. We say thank you for your good hands, your marvelous help, your faithfulness, your mercy, your power, your glory, your grace, your wisdom. Father, we say thank you for the supernatural that cannot be denied with the remedy movement and upon all her sewers and members. Lord, we give you the praise. Father, we say thank you. Take all your glory, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have given thanks to the almighty God. Please put your hands together for Jesus to wait bigger and bigger and can they have your seats. And in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. We shall proceed following this service 
and we shall be doing our prophetic prayer number one. Hallelujah. And we shall be praying to our God Yahweh in this order. Our God Yahweh, as we partake of the communion table, which is the body and the blood of Jesus Christ, in this service, let our spirit man and our mortal bodies carry the life of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. John chapter 10, verse number 10. Wherever you are, please follow us. John 10, verse number 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. John chapter 6, verse 48 to 58. John chapter 6, 48 to 58. And it reads, I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. Hallelujah. I am the living bread which come down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. The Jews, therefore, the, the Jews, therefore, stole among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except Ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood. Ye have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood doeth in me, and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which come down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna, and are dead. He that eateth this bread shall live forever. Shall amen. amen. Second Corinthians 4. We read from number 10 to 13. 2 Corinthians 4, we read from verse 10 to 13. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Christ's sake. That the life also of Christ might be made manifest in our mortal bodies. So then, death worketh in us, but life in you. We, having the same spirit of faith, and calling as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. And we shall be speaking in this order. Our God Yahweh. As we partake of the communal table, which is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. In this service, let our spirit man and our mortal bodies carry the life of Christ. Wherever you are, let's jump to our feet, lift our voices and pray. That the life of Jesus Christ may manifest 
in our mortal body. Elebu sapala, elebu sapala, elebu sapala, elebu sapala, elebu sapala. Our God, Yahweh, as we partake of the communion table, which is the body and the blood of Jesus Christ in the service. Our God, Yahweh, our God, Yahweh, as we partake of the communion table, which is the body, the blood of Jesus Christ in the service. Let our spirit man and our mortal bodies carry the life of Jesus Christ. 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 In this service, in this service, in this service, let our spirit man, let our spirit man, let our spirit man, let our spirit man and our mortal bodies carry the life of Jesus Christ. Carry the life of Jesus Christ in the service, in the service, in the service. It shall be a la cousa pale, it shall be, 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 may the cousa pale, a cousa ma, a cousa ma, as we partake of the communion table, which is the pale, which is the blood of Jesus Christ. In the service, in the service, in the service, in the service, let our spirit man carry, carry, carry the life of Jesus Christ. Let our spirit man carry, carry the life of Jesus Christ in our spirits, in our soul. Let our spirit in our soul manifest the life of Jesus Christ. Manifest the life of the risen Christ. Manifest the life of Jesus Christ. Manifest the life of Jesus Christ. Manifest the life of Jesus Christ in our going out, in our coming in, in every calorie, in every calorie, in every association. Lipalusa, Ekusama, Ekusama. Ekusama, manifest the life of Jesus Christ at our white places, at our business places. Manifest in our spirit man the life of Jesus Christ. Let our mortal bodies carry, 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 carry Christ. Carry, carry, carry the fight you of Christ. Carry, carry Christ. Carry, carry, carry Christ. Let our mortal body manifest the grace of Christ, the wisdom of Christ, the understanding of Christ. Let our mortal body carry the papa is second. Let our spirit, let our soul manifest the power of Christ, the faith of Christ, the might of Christ, the wisdom of Christ. Let our spirit, let our soul manifest the revelation of Christ, the enlightenment of Christ, the inspiration of Christ in the service, in the service, in the service, in the service, in the service. Let our mortal police manifest supernatural strength, supernatural health, supernatural boldness, supernatural power. Lepala, ekasuma, 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 supernatural health, spirit, soul, and body. Father, we gave you praise. Thank you, O oh God. Blessed be the God of remedy who have not turned away our prayers. Lord, we give you all the glory. Blessed be your name. And in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying to our God, Yahweh. For answer to prayer, wherever you are, please put your hands together. Jam it together unto the Lord. Unto the Lord. And wherever you are, you may please have your seat in God's presence.
somebody shout the loudest hallelujah. One more time, hallelujah. It is another privilege. We will be standing up as we pray our prophetic prayer number two in this order. Our God, Yahweh, as we partake of the communion table, which is the body and the blood of Jesus Christ in the service, flush out every evil deposit in our mortal bodies and in our bloodline. Flush out every evil deposit in our mortal bodies and in our bloodline. Line. Evil deposit encounter true bloodline trace, food in your dream, and the rest of it. Hallelujah. Let us turn our Bibles open. The prayer of focus is on the monitor. The references are there, and we will be reeling few of those references. And be standing up to pray. Joel chapter 3, we read verse number 21. Joel chapter 3, verse number 21. For I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed. For the Lord dwelleth in Zion. I will cleanse their blood. Every deposit of sickness... Every deposit of spiritual heaviness. Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. We begin reading from verse number 25. We read a few of the verses. 25, skip to 28, 38 to 39. Matthew chapter 13. We begin from verse number 25. But why men slept? His enemy came and sold tears among the weak and went his way. 28. He said unto them, An enemy had done this. The servant said unto him, Would thou then that we go and gather them up? Verse number 38 to 39. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the Angels. Hebrews chapter 9. We begin reading from verse number 19 to 22. Hebrews chapter 9, beginning from verse 19 to 22. For when Moses has spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scattered wood and hops up and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God had enjoined unto you. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by the Lord purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. Revelation chapter 12, verse number 11. Revelation chapter 12, verse number 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. 
and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Our God, Yahweh, as we partake of the communion table, which is the body and the blood of Jesus Christ in this service, flush out every evil deposit in our mortal bodies and in our bloodline. I'm sure you are set to pray that prayer of deliverer. Jump to your feet wherever you are connected to this service. Wherever you are, be on your feet. As you lift your voice and pray with all your spirit, our God, Yahweh, as we partake of the communion table, which is the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. In this service, Almighty God, Yahweh, flush out every evil deposit in our mortal body. Flush out every evil deposit in our bloodline. Almighty God, evil deposit in our mortal body. Our God and our Father, Yahweh, as we partake of the communion, Almighty God, Yahweh, flush out Every evil deposit. Let Toma Rosa Zeria run Tema a Papa Ruzia. Leku Beleno Zuzama run Tema Elezia. Yahweh evil deposit of affliction. Lord God Almighty, evil deposit of setback. Our call and our Father, Yahweh, as we partake of the communion table, the body and the blood of Jesus in this service, our call, Yahweh, flush out every evil deposit in our mortal body, our call, deposit of sickness, deposit of affliction, deposit of spiritual heaven, almighty God, our Father, in our bloodline, deposit of failure, deposit of poverty, deposit of Yahweh, Lekuz of tomorrow Zeria, our call, Yahweh, by the blood, in tomorrow Zaya, a year Roman Duma, a Papa Rosa Pelema, a Toma Zeria, Le Mandosia, Le Mandosia, Le Toma Eruzegesa, Yahweh, the deposit, Le Cupelenosa, Ramon Duma, Eruze Zeria, our call as we partake of the communion table, which is the body and the blood of Jesus, Lord God Almighty, flush out every evil deposit in our mouth. The body, Yahweh, Lekuza Zeria Elema, Atoma Zapaparusia, Ramdema Zeria, Almighty God, Eva Deposit in our bloodline, let it be flushed, Eva Deposit in our mortal body, Yahweh, let it be flushed as we partake of the communion, let it be flushed. The body and the blood of Jesus. Let every evil deposit in our body be flushed out. Evil deposit in our blood. Our call, Yahweh. Yahweh, do it for us. Oh. Cleanse our blood today. Cleanse our blood today. Yahweh, do it for us. Yahweh, we gave you praise. Thank you, Almighty God. Cleansing our bloodline. Flushing out every evil deposit. Limiting us, afflicting us, suppressing us. Yahweh, we gave you the praise. Thank you, Almighty God. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And as we have prayed it, we will experience it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Thy word is a lamb unto my feet and a light to my path. The entrance of the word gave it understanding to the simple. For the word of God, put our hands together for Jesus. Let's do a pickup as we receive the assistant resident pastor. Do a pickup to the king of glory.
Let us live with our voice and appreciate the Almighty God Yahweh. Call upon me, and I, the Lord, will show you great and mighty things. Father, we thank you, Lord, for hearing us, for answering our prayers this hour. Lord, we appreciate you, O God, for the life of Jesus in our mortal bodies, in our spirit, man. We will say thank you, Lord, for flushing out every evil deposits in our mortal bodies and in our bloodline. To you alone be all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. We are giving thanks to our God, Yahweh. With the joy of the Lord in our hearts, put your hands together for the King of glory. Do it. Be gone to the Lord as we greet one another. Our God, Yahweh, is real. God bless us and God bless our family this morning. Please may be seated in God's presence this hour. Hallelujah. Once again, we want to count this as a great privilege as we gather in the presence of the almighty God, Yahweh, where there is fullness of joy, where there is rest, where there is peace. The Bible says, upon my Zion, there shall be deliverance. There shall be holiness, and the people shall possess their possession. Hallelujah. On this note, I want to appreciate God and thank him so much for our Father, for the privilege that he keeps giving to us to be able to grow. Sir, so I'm humble and I am grateful. Put your hands together for the Almighty God, Yahweh. And we also want to recognize our own mama in the house. We want to appreciate God for you, mama. Thank God, thank you. Hallelujah, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Shortly, while I'm here, we'll be taking on a series titled, How Does God Guide and Direct Us on this joining of life. How does God guide and direct us on this joining of life? How does God guide you and I, direct you and I on this joining of life? That is what we have come to know. This teaching given to God's servant by the almighty God Yahweh we help us order our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We help us to know who to turn to for guidance and direction in Jesus' name. How does God guide and direct us on this joining of life? We need to know. It is God that guides us and direct us on this journey of life. But we need to understand how he does it. Psalm chapter 37 and verse 23 as we begin. How does God guide and direct us on this joining of life? The steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. The steps of a good man, they are ordered by the Lord. So it is God that orders our steps, but how he does it? How does he order our steps on this journey of life? Life is a journey, as God said, always said. Life it's a joining. And we are in this joining. Some of us are on the joining to become medical doctors, civil engineers, electrical engineers. But we need God guidance. So no matter the path of joining you are on, you need the guidance of God. So it is God that directs, that order our steps. Romans chapter 1 and verse number 10. 
is a making request. If by any means, now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. Making request is asking. He's asking the Lord. He's missing his friends, perhaps. His family members, Paul speaking. Perhaps the church in Rome. But he said, making a request, if by any means now at length, I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come to you. There are some of us we desire to go places. We desire to meet people. But have we considered asking? Paul was very, very conscious and recognized that this joining of life is not within his control alone. Because he got two legs so he can just jump up and go anywhere. He had to make a request. So he recognized that what, wherever he will go and whenever he will go there, it has to be in line with God's will for his life on this journey. So that it can be prosperous. He needed God's approval, God's guidance and direction. But today some of us, we just wake up. I'm going and we just leave. No guidance, no direction. And that is why God's servant has always said it. Before you leave from here, go anywhere. Not that you want to control your life. Let it be made known. Let it be made known. Few years back, I had to go to attend my sister's graduation. I came and asked. He said, don't go. Someone else will get angry. That, oh, they will more me up. And she's like, my mom. No, I said, I didn't even have to answer. That very graduation day, there were three car accidents on the Banga Highway. Had I gone, I would have probably been one of them. Today, there will be no Pastor Nick. We need divine guidance, direction. Hallelujah. So Paul recognized it. And that's why we need to ask God to continuously guide us. Not in one situation, but in every situation of our lives. Every aspect of our lives, whatever we are doing, we need his guidance in his direction. Whatever it is, don't despise God's direction. Don't despise his guidance. And that's why in Proverbs 16 verse 9 says, a man's heart divides his ways. Yes, make your plans. It is not a bad thing to make plans. Make the plan. But know this one thing is the law that directs your steps. Make the plan. But it is God that must direct yourself when to move, when not to move. Let God be the one to direct us. We heard the testimonies on Sunday. The bash, first bash left when Nigeria, second bash left when Nigeria. When his time came, he said he was not going. And when God guided him, this grace never approached him. So we need the guidance of God continuously because when God guides us, God seven said on Sunday, we will never fail. When God is guiding you, you never fail in whatever you are doing. You never fail. When God is guiding you, you are walking in the will and purpose of God for your life. Let us how 
does God guide and direct our life on this journey of life? How does God guide and direct us on this journey of life? How does he do it? Number one. I give one point. How does God guide and direct us on this journey of life? Whether it is in your marriage, it's a journey. Whether it's in your business, it's a journey. On this ministry, it's a journey. So any area of your life, it is a journey. Because there's a destination. And God said, we will get there in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not miss our destination in the mighty name of Jesus. He said we will not be confused. Why? Because we are guided. How God God direct our life on our and direct us on this joining of life. It is through the pressing of the Holy Spirit. Through the pressing of the Holy Spirit. How does God guide and direct us on this journey of life is through the pressing of the Holy Spirit. Through the pressing of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a divine being. He is not it. He is not a thing. He is a divine being. And that's why he said through the pressing of the Holy Spirit. He is a divine being. A divine person like you and I. Like you can feel. He also can feel. Like you can think. He also he thinks. He's intelligent. The pressing of the Holy Spirit. Like you can speak. He himself, he speaks. He speaks. So he is a divine being. Through the pressing of the Holy Spirit. He guides us. He directs us. Through the pressing of the Holy Spirit. See John 16 and verse number 13 to 15. See John 16, 13. How be it when the Spirit of truth is come, He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and will show you things to come. He will guide you. Bible didn't say eight. The Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. He will guide you as you open this book. He will guide you in understanding the word of God. He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into understanding God's plan and purpose for your life. He will guide you into all truth. In your marriage, he will guide you. In your business, he will guide you into all truth. He doesn't deceive. By the grace of God, upon this movement, upon the life of God's servant, we shall not be deceived in the mighty name of Jesus. By the Holy Spirit guiding us, we shall not be manipulated in the mighty name of Jesus. He will guide us into all truth. Not just for a moment, but even years to come. Because the Bible says, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Even things to come. The next five years, 
He will show you things to come. Verse 14, he shall glorify me, for he shall receive of me and shall show it unto you. So everything that the Lord Jesus has promised and designed for your life, stop looking elsewhere. Stop going to my neighbor, my Gibi. You won't find it there. He said, everything that I package for you, he will show you. So every plan and purpose for our life, we need to get to him to direct us and to guide us. How does God guide and direct us on this journey of life? It's through the pressing of the Holy Spirit. All things that the Father are, are mine, therefore say I, that he, talking about the Holy Spirit, shall take of me, of mine, and show it unto you. The Holy Spirit will go to Jesus. What are you saying concerning John Brown? What are you saying concerning this sister? He will now come and reveal it to you. And he will guide you into whatever the law has purpose for your life. Let's look at some scriptural example of the Holy Spirit guiding. Acts chapter 8 and verse 29. The Bible says, Then the Spirit said unto Philip, Go! Acts 8 verse 29. Then the Spirit, talking about the Holy Spirit, he said unto Philip, Go near and join thyself to the chariot. Go! Guiding and directing him. Where to go? How to get there? Go and join yourself to the chariot. It was the Holy Spirit speaking, talking. Say, go and get there. May you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus. As the Lord has opened the ears of our Father, let it be our portion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Acts chapter 10, verse 19 to 22, while Peter threw on the vision, while Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. While Peter thought on the vision he had, the Bible says the Spirit came to Peter to guide him on the next journey. On that assignment, he said, three men are coming to you. Don't be afraid. Join them. Don't doubt. Join them. Some of us Perhaps the Lord has told you that this person is coming to you and you are doubting. He said, don't doubt. On the journey to Cornelius, to the house of Cornelius, he was guiding him and directing him to the journey to save his soul. For I have sent them, verse 21, then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom ye seek. What is the cause wherefore ye are come? And they said, Cornelius the centurion, a just man, and one that feared God and of good report among all the nation of the Jews was one from God by an holy angel to send for thee into his house and to hear the words of thee. So the Spirit had to guide him through to take him to the house of Cornelius where he was able to save the household of Cornelius. Don't think you have arrived the Bible said this man was a just man. He even feared God, but he still needed salvation. He still needed salvation. 
And God used Peter via the Holy Spirit to guide Peter to lead him to the house of Cornelius and save that whole house. God will guide you in the mighty name of Jesus. God will guide you in whatever you are doing in the mighty name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will speak to your ear and guide you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit will speak to your ear and direct you in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say, Holy Spirit, guide my life and direct my life. Acts chapter 13 and verse number 1. We'll begin from there. Acts 13 verse 1 to 3. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. As Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger and Lucius of Serene and Mania which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and so. He said, as they minister to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost said, separate Barnabas from Paul or Saul. He was guided now how to go about the ministry. Like you always hear, God seven as he's been guided by the Holy Spirit. You heard him that the movement had gone to another level. So he received an instruction. So create this group that they are set for this purpose. So it's the same issue. The Holy Spirit will say, separate me, Panambas and Saul, for the work where unto I have called them. Separate these two people. The person you are working with, is it the person that God has designed for you? Ask the Holy Spirit. Is that your rightful partner? Ask him. He says, separate these people. Even though they are all in the church. But look, I want you to separate them. Send Saul this way and send Paul this way. Guided them how to carry on the ministry. The Bible says, and when they fasted and prayed and lay their hands on them, they send them away. They send them away. And that's why by the grace of God, uh, God said we can send people away here. We can send people away. So if you are here and the Spirit of God tells God, someone, send him away, send him away, he will send you away. We will ask second thought. So you know we are sending people away here. Hallelujah. But it is by the Holy Spirit. It's not by the flesh. So only those who are sons that the Holy Spirit will lead. Only those who are daughters of God that the Holy Spirit will lead. Those are the Holy, ones that the Holy Spirit will guide and direct their life on this journey. In the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 14, the Bible says, as many as are led, as many as are guided and directed on this journey of life, the Bible says they are the sons of God. So if you see that God is not directing you by the Holy Spirit, check yourself. Check your relationship with God. Direct us on this journey of life through the pressing of the Holy Spirit. It is through the pressing of the Holy Spirit. So if you are a son and daughter being led, guided and directed on this journey of life by the person of the Holy Spirit, Galatians 5, chapter 16 says, this I say, then walk in the Spirit. Remain in it. Remain walking in the Spirit. Don't walk in your flesh. This I say then, walk in the spirit. Why? Why 
do we need? You see, if the Holy Spirit is leading you and guiding you, it says, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. With he guiding you, you cannot fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because the flesh is contrary to the spirit. So the flesh wants one thing and the Holy Spirit wants another thing. So he said, walk in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. First, it is said, but if ye be led by the spirit, ye are not under the law. Verse 25 say, and if we live in the spirit, let us also continue to walk in the spirit. So daily we should walk in the spirit so that we can enjoy the pressing of the Holy Spirit, his guidance and his direction. When we are in the flesh, we don't experience his guidance. We don't experience his direction. We walk on the wrong path. Of, on this journey of life, the pressing of the Holy Spirit guides and directs us on a daily basis in the following ways. So now we know God guides us through the pressing of the Holy Spirit. And how does he do it? On this journey of life, the pressing of the Holy Spirit guides and directs us on a daily basis. So he is never tired. He guides us on a daily basis. And how does he do it? He does it by showing us. He does it by what? Showing us. He does it by showing us. That's one way. He shows us things that will put us on the alert. You are in that relationship. You are gone two, three years. Before you get to know the man, get 15 years old child. He show you. He has shown you something. He has shown you something. To be mindful and careful of in making your final decision. God said when I said this here, no one get married will oh, God show you a sign. The Holy Spirit will show you something. He will not just leave you like that. He will show you something to caution you, to guide you and direct you on this journey of life so that you will not miss your way, so that you won't walk in shame. See, John 16, verse 13, we read it. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak and show. He will show you things to come. He will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it on to you. He will show it on to you. If that thing will be good, he will show it on to you. If it will be bad, the Holy Spirit will show it to you. He will not just let you, allow you to walk in that thing where I show you signs. He will show you signs. He will show you it. God's servant speaking on Sunday. He said after he went to Jiklo, he came across a scripture. Don't go in haste. He told our man, 
and there was an agreement. Easy access back came back today. We can see what's happening here. Because why? There was a showing. He will always show you a sign. He will show you something. Nobody enters in anything without him showing you. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. Jeremiah 33. Call upon me and I the Lord will show you great and mighty things which thou knoweth not. He said when you were coming down the stairs, he knew he was going to be great one day. He saw it where? In the Bible. He showed it to him there. So, whatever they are said to him, they are pointing us out, it didn't mean anything. He knew because he saw. He will always show you. Shine your eyes. That business partner you want to connect with. And the man is not even honest. The Holy Spirit is showing you that this person you come to start business with. <laughs> Be careful. If he is not even honest with just 100 or 200 dollars, imagine when you enter into the millions, he will rake off for you. So he's showing you signs. He will always show you. And Psalm chapter 91, verse 16 says, With long life, we are set for him and show him my salvation. I will show you my redemption. I will show you my deliverance. He said, I will show you. So, one way is by showing us. Another way on this journey of life that the person of the Holy Spirit guides and directs us on a daily basis is by teaching us. Is by teaching us. He teaches us so many things. Like, for example, our father is a accountant. This is the Holy Spirit teaching. He said it to you. He knows management. And that one is it's not something for us to even uh, think. We can see where the way the work is going. How did he learn it? Via the Holy Spirit teaching. So he teaches us. Some of you, there are things you know right now. Nobody taught you. Nobody taught you. But you just know it. You just know it. A young lady brought an act. Walk. If you see the walk, you think it's computer. She didn't go to school for it. But when I get sit down to draw you, when you see yourself, you think they take camera and snap you. But she never went to school for it. He teaches us. See John chapter 16 and verse, see John chapter 14 and verse 26. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. So we are not limited. You are not limited. He will teach you everything. As long as you want to learn, he's available to teach you. As long as you want to learn, the Holy Spirit is available to teach you. And number three is by instructing us. On this journey of life, the person of the Holy Spirit guides and directs us on a daily basis in, on a daily basis by instructing us. He will give you instructions. Go this way. Go that way. Take it. Follow it. Don't ignore it. No matter how it looks like, just follow it. Deuteronomy 32 and verse number 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the Lord of his inheritance. He found him in a desert land and in a waste howling wilderness. 
He led him about. He instructed him and kept him as the apple of his eyes. As an eagle stared up her nest, flutter over her young, spread her abroad, her wing, take them, bear them on his wing. So the Lord alone did me cry and direct him. And see the effect when, God, when the Holy Spirit is guiding you. When the person of the Holy Spirit is guiding you, is directing you through his instructions. See the effect. He made him ride on the high places of the earth. Isn't that the movement on the high place? So you, 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 you understand that God seven has produced a, a son who is a president now. Because of one instruction. Keep quiet. Stay where you are. One instruction. Keep quiet. Stay where you are. You make you to ride on high places. You enjoy good things. When the whole person of the Holy Spirit is guiding and directing your life on a daily basis by showing you things, by instructing you, look, you will never be down. You will never be down. As a, by privilege, doing the, 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 the anniversary, 50th anniversary, I saw some kind of package for God someone as gift. Have a boss on it. Take. Are you not listening? Uh, you won't be receiving. You ain't. If you are not listening to, to come back to Labrio, what we are experiencing in 13 years, we wouldn't have experienced it in 13 years. Because you follow instructions. As the instruction come via the person of the Holy Spirit, take it in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are doing it for the Lord, you can do it bigger. Are you sure you want to honor the Lord with that hand clap? Do it properly. It is offering time. Please let's open our Bibles to the book of Exodus chapter 35. Verse 5. Exodus chapter 35, verse 5. Take ye from among you an offering unto the Lord. Whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it an offering of the Lord. Gold and silver and brass. Whosoever is of a willing heart. I'm very sure you have a good understanding of that scripture. I'd like you to package your tithe, your offerings. And if you have done so, I'd like you to be on your feet as we honor the Lord. Almighty God, Yahweh, our God and our Father, we thank you for another privilege to sow in your kingdom. Let your name alone be honored. Let your name alone be praised. Let your name alone be glorified. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Please, you may be seated, cast your offerings as you listen to the following announcements. I'd like us to declare the perfected word for the year together, want to go. 2024. Our weekdays activities, April 2024. Good news, good news, good news, good news. Friday morning service, April 12th. 2024 is our encounter service through perfected prayer, and the time is 7 a.m. Good news, good news, good news. Next Sunday services, April 14, 2024. First service is at 9 a.m. Talk and anointing service. Our gathering time is as early as 6:30 a.m. Anointing for acceleration, spiritual and physical overtaking anointing 
Hallelujah. Second service is at 11.15. Talk, worship the King, Jesus Christ, and couple with anointing service, expect of divine touch, come and experience the supernatural and the miraculous. So everyone in the remedy family is a soul window. Your miracle is in your obedience. See us fulfill your Christian mandate in John 15, 16. Please invite someone for our services this week. The church is a family, not an organization or denomination. To all stewards, please follow up with your weekly prayer schedule and activities of your group. All coordinators of the various service groups should follow up with all scriptural instructions from the altar. The youth ministry is pleased to invite everyone to her two days youth and life crusade, which will begin on tomorrow, Thursday, April 11, 2024, at the Lagbasi Turning Point, and we end on Friday, April 12, 2024, at 5 p.m. The time is 5 p.m. daily. The crusade will climax on April 13, 2024, with a parade and sports day at the the Invisible Sports Park, remain blessed, sign the youth leadership. For the word of guardians we have received this night, and with a heart of joy, I'd like you to be on your feet. Put your hands together for the Lord as we welcome God's servants. You can do it bigger. Lift up your voice to heaven. Let's appreciate the Lord. Let's tell him thank you for answer to all of our prayers this evening. Let's appreciate him. Let's give him all of the praise. Lift up your voice to heaven and give God thanks for hearing our prayers, for answering our prayers. Let's appreciate him for the word that we have received tonight. Let's return the glory to him. Father, we say thank you for the understanding you have given to us. We return all of the praise and the glory to you. Thank you and thank you and thank you, Lord. You take all the glory in Jesus only name we have given thanks to our God, Yahweh. Amen. If truly you are blessed, your amen will sound the loudest. Praise the Lord. Please follow up with this series this month. There are many things you'll be hearing that will help you on this journey. I wish the entire church is here to hear this series. It's very important to you and to me, especially on this journey of life. On this journey, you don't guess. It's dangerous. On this journey, you don't assume. It's painful. You must be definite. It's a risk to take a journey when you don't know where you're going. And how you will get to it is dangerous. You have heard this. Life is a journey. And every one of us are on this journey. Our direction may not be the same. But believe me, what it takes to get you to where you should go is the same. If my journey in ministry will end well, I need God to guide me. 
I need him. If your journey in life is to become the biggest and the greatest businessman, you need God. If your journey is to become the greatest musician that will affect generations, you need God. So, it's important that you and I should understand this aspect as we take on our journeys in life. The Bible said there is a way that seemeth right, but the end is destruction. God won't want you to get at the middle of your journey and you end your life. No. That is not his wish. That is not his desire for any mortal man. So it's very important. If you understand this, there are too many things you avoid on this life journey. And these things you avoid will help you not to mismanage your life and have a latter end regret of decisions made. So it's very important. Now, the series has already been introduced. I'm going to show you six things you need to understand when it comes to divine direction that will help you. I have said this. I'm not guessing. Everything I'm privileged of doing here, I'm very definite. Now, there are things you get to understand about the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I'm sure many of you have heard either yourself or the Holy Spirit, and sometimes you become confused about the things that you hear, and you keep asking yourself, is it God that is speaking to me? Sir, believe me, if God speaks, I know. If my flesh is talking, I know. If it's a human voice, I know. Very clear about it. If I'm hearing myself, I know I'm hearing myself. Because there's a possibility that you can talk to yourself. And you may think that it's God who is talking to you. So there's a way that you and I need to understand how to differentiate that of the voice of God, that of your own voice, and even the voices around you. You need to understand that. And this is where the journey begins. How does he guide us? How does he lead us? How does he direct us? You are not going to hear God the way Moses had God. It's a lie. If he's going to speak to you in that way, it takes the voice of the Holy Spirit. The audible voice I've heard is the Holy Spirit that spoke to me. But in other words, we know it's God that is speaking to us. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It seems that he's speaking to us, but he doesn't use his voice, but he uses the voice of the Holy Spirit. So how am I going to be sure that this is the Holy Spirit that is talking to me? It's important too. Very important, especially this month, what we are into Sir, believe me, if you miss this aspect of your life, nothing else can help you. You talk about prosperity. You can't talk about prosperity outside of divine guidance. Because the Bible says the prosperity of a fool will destroy him. Why? He's rich, but he doesn't know how to go about it. So he ends up spending his money to kill himself. The labor of the foolish weary thing. Why? He doesn't know how to go into the city. Now he has the ability to walk 
And there's a job that is given to him, but he doesn't know how to go about it. So even in the midst of the city, the God doesn't know his way in. This is very important to you, very important. Sir, believe me, if you miss this, you don't have a future. I can tell you the truth. No matter your level of education, listen to this teaching. Now. We're held on Sunday already, and there's another phase of it. And all of these teachings are meant to help us on this life journey. You will not miss, be misdirected. How does he guide us? How does he direct us? It's through the presence of the Holy Spirit. So who do you talk to in the morning to guide you? Holy Spirit. Please guide me. Talk to me. Instruct me. Let me hear what you want to say. And we have heard. The presence of the Holy Spirit comes in to guide you and I. By giving us what? Instructions. By teaching us. By what? Showing us. There are things he has shown to you. If you have listened to him, you will not be in that problem. But you saw it as the enemy. Oh, that Satan attacking me. So what become of the end result? You have realized that it's not Satan attacking you. He shows you. He teaches you. And he instructs you. And to add to it, how does he guide you? By correcting you. Many mistakes we have entered into. That you will tell say, eh, get from there. He said, I'm not leaving. He said, okay, stay there. If I can't correct you, I won't help you. Your life will find correction. Follow it. So from now on, to the end of your journey in eternity, you wake up in the morning, ask him, Holy Spirit, guide me. What next? Where do I go? What do you expect of me? Please show it to me. Please teach me these things that I need to know. By privilege, that's how I'm being guided. By privilege. And I'm not different from you. I walk under somebody. I thought maybe the man used to be guessing until I had the privilege to, to be in that office. And I realized that ah, this thing is real. And let me say this in closing. Nothing happens to a believer without God showing that thing to that believer. Nothing that happens to you by surprise. Either you are not sensitive to pick up the signal based on God's direction. Then suddenly it will happen. He said, hey, it's a surprise. It's not a surprise. Wake up. Oh. This month is not a day, a month that you and I should miss services. And I repeat myself, if you miss divine direction, you don't have a destiny. Ask yourself where you are now. Was it the plan of God for your life to be where you are? No, you miss something. And I said to a, a friend who is in America, running the ministry, I said, listen to me. If you are wrong, you are wrong. If you miss the way, you miss the way. For example, if you are going from here to Douala and you get down to Broad Street, have you reached Douala? No, be real now. Have you reached Douala? Is Douala your final destination? You go down to Broad Street and you start going Gale, uh, uh, either Gale Street or Randall Street. He said, that's Douala, that's Douala. I will advise you that to stop, turn back and ask somebody who knows the way to Douala Stop a car for yourself, enter and go where you are going. When you get there, you find rest. 
We are on journeys that are not just necessary. And that's why you keep struggling and you'll be calling God, where are you? He said, you have left your path. Return back to your path. I told a young man in America, I said, leave America, come back to Liberia, come and do something better for yourself. You stay there, you will damage your life and your family member's life. It's a waste of time. You have missed your way. America is not your final destination in life. But there are others who are there, sent by God, directed by God, who are succeeding. You don't have to go and play a funny game and marry to somebody else. For what reason? I will advise you as much as I've advised myself. You need God's guidance. You need God's direction. But how does he do it? It's through the person of the Holy Spirit. And then how he to guide us is by teaching us, by showing us, by instructing us. Ask yourself, Lord, where I am, is it where you want me to be? Show me. Give me a sign. But more is yet to be communicated to you and I where if you understand this aspect of life, I can tell you the truth, sir. Rest and show, no matter how time takes, you have a future. Yeah. You have a future. Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, direct me. Lift up your voice and pray that prayer right now. Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, direct me. Are you talking to him? It's a person, yes. He speaks, he understands. Holy Spirit, guide me. Holy Spirit, direct me. Show me the things I need to know. Teach me the things I need to understand in life. Holy Spirit, guide me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' holy name, we have prayed to our God, Yahweh. So please, on Friday, the service will be in the morning and the time is 7 a.m. What can we say to the Almighty God? Louder. The loudest. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty and dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. The Lord of hosts, Jesus. the God of Jacob, the Lord of hosts, Jesus. the God of Jacob, Jesus. the Lord of hosts, Jesus. The God of Jacob, 2024, April 2024, we guide and direct me on this journey of life. For thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely my angels of goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the holy presence of God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Lift up your voice as we appreciate God. Father, we speak your word on this table tonight. We release your power and your grace upon it. Consecrate it. Bless it. Sanctify it for us. Use this meal tonight to release the life of Jesus into our mortal body and flush out every evil deposit in our bloodline and also in our mortal bodies tonight. Consecrate the Lord. Change it into the precious body and blood tonight. Thank you, Holy Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
Let's say our prayer. One, two, please position yourself. One, two, three, let's go. Father, I receive the life of Jesus Christ in my mortal body via the communion table. Do it the loudest. Father, I receive the life of Jesus Christ in my mortal body via the communion table. Do it the loudest. Father, I receive the life of Jesus Christ in my mortal body via the communion table. Please take your seat as you partake of the table. God bless you. Why you know the song to sing it? Yes. 